The Lions go to San Francisco. Not only are they 0-2 this season, they've lost 10 of the last 11 games to the 49ers in the last 20 years. Jason Hart with CBS Sports' Charlie Cassidy. Glad to be with you on the NFL previews presented by Comcast. And Charlie, let's start with the state of Detroit. Obviously, it's the state of Michigan, but the state of the Lions <laughs> as a football team. Uh, Roy Williams griping about the new offense, a lot of uh, unrest in that locker room. What is the state of Rod Marinelli's team? Well, I tell you what, Rod Marinelli, th this is a challenge in coaching. When things aren't going well, uh, what you have to do is you've got to gather, uh, get everybody inside there, get everybody on the same page. Now, this is even a more challenging week for him because uh, there were people, John Kittner being one, who, who liked Mike Martz, liked his style of offense, which was somewhat controversial uh, inside the Detroit organization. So uh, th this will be a challenge, especially if they don't win. But, you know, this is where the leadership comes into play of the head coach. Yeah, and well, speaking of uh, coaching, you mentioned Mike Martz. He's on San Francisco's sideline as the offensive coordinator. J.T. O'Sullivan, he was in Detroit last year. He's on San Francisco's sideline. They had 365 yards of offense last week in the overtime win at Seattle. They only surpassed 350 once all of last season. Is the optimism, should it really be there as much as it is right now in San Francisco? Well, I think a couple of points there. First of all, you got a terrific runner in Frank Gore. We're going to look at his stats here of the beginning of the year. You can see he's almost five yards of carry on the rush, over 10 yards on a reception. Those are outstanding numbers. Frank Gore can do this. He's a legitimate outstanding running back so that that's not a fluke there now the thing with Mike Martz Mike Martz knows the personnel on the defensive side of the ball for Detroit and the defensive staff of Detroit knows Mike Martz what's that mean well first of all Mike Martz is going to open it up and throw it downfield his quarterback though got sacked eight times last week so somehow the pass rush of Detroit which is is, is not very good okay they're going to have to blitz and come with people to get pressure so it's going to be a question of sacks versus big plays who wins that statistic Number of times O'Sullivan sack versus number of big plays he can make. That's who's going to win the ball game. And it may be versus number of times O'Sullivan throws an interception versus the number of times John Kitna throws an interception because twice last week the, the, the Lions were down 21 nothing and came back to get a one point lead against Green Bay. He threw two picks for touchdowns uh, in the fourth quarter alone. Is that always going to happen? I mean, it seems to have happened the last two years with Kitna, and it's happened this year as well. Well, that, that's not part of the, uh, the issue with John Kitna. He, he's a veteran quarterback. But at times, he'll be careless with the football and take chances. As you can see, the four interceptions is not good. Now, what I see in this, I see two quarterbacks that are prone to have the potential to throw interceptions. We know with John Kitten, we've just seen his stats. When I watched J.T. O'Sullivan last week, hey, this guy can throw the football. He has a strong arm and a very quick release. He can stretch the field, which is what Mike Martz likes to do. I'm sure that's why he likes him. But guess what? He threw some last week that should have been intercepted now. So you could see him throw a few interceptions. Well, I guess when you've been sacked eight times, you want to get rid of the That's football right. as fast as possible. The other part to this, the Lions, you know, we said against Green Bay, they came back from a 21 nothing deficit. They were down 21 nothing against Atlanta as well. How do they get off to a better start? Well, I, I think they will. But percentages to say they're going to get off to you a better start. You have to at some point, right? Game. But, you know, don't give up the big play, which is what they did uh, against Atlanta and Green Bay the last two weeks. And, you know, Mike Martz is looking at that, and he's going after that. Now, Frank Gore, He's a big play runner. San Francisco doesn't have big play receivers, so you should be able to stop the big play there. Uh, though, they'll, though March's passing attack will eat up chunks of yardage 20 yards at a time. Yeah, Frank Gore had over 160 yards when these two teams met a couple years ago uh, as well. But that one was in Detroit, a San Francisco victory. Let's throw all the numbers into the computer 10,000 times, 10,000 results, the AccuScore prediction. And how about that? San Francisco, a, a team is huge favorite against the Lions. Who do you like? I like San Francisco. They're playing at home. They're coming off a big road win. Uh, the offense is going to get better every week there. Uh, it should be. Uh, I think uh, the thing with Detroit, two losses, heartbreaking one last week where they had the lead in the fourth quarter, as Jason pointed out. Now you're going on the road. San Francisco has too many things going for them right now. All right, we'll see how it plays out. It's a 4.05 p.m. Eastern start. And for more on this game or any other in Week 3, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Charlie Casserly, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.